welcome everybody once again to a safe place podcast and again we're joined by tim who tim you're a remedial hypnotherapist is that a remedial hypnotist a remedial hypnotist what does the remedial part of Uh, remedial means by way of remedy Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about hypnotherapy. Uh, I've got a hypnotherapy background. Craig's done it as a course for a year as well, and Tim's the remedial hypnotherapist in the team. So hopefully he's going to enlighten us hypnotist. with more. Oh, hypnotist, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. He's going to enlighten us with more knowledge. So if we can break down what we think hypnotherapy is, how it works. Right. Uh, so no pressure again, Tim. No pressure, well, yeah. Just direct Tim. all of our attention back towards Tim and hope he can handle the pressure. No pressure, Tim. In three words. Tell me what it is exactly. Um, He's okay. already hypnotised you. Right, the, right. the reason, I'll tell you the reason why I don't use hypnotherapist, yes. okay, mainly because it's a marketing thing, if I'm honest. Oh, yeah, I don't, not everyone in this country anyway, if we're, if we're going out to America, everyone's got their therapist. In I've this country, that. people don't necessarily want therapy. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't, my model isn't that there's something wrong with you that needs fixing. My model is, right, how do we want to upgrade? How do we want to advance today? What's the thing that holds us back that we want to change? Okay. okay yeah. And we're using hypnosis to, to do that. The other thing is as well, um, so if I meet people at network, I built my business by networking, by going to those morning events, yeah. god awful early in the morning things where you just go and chat over coffee about what you do. Yeah. If I if I say I'm I'm a hypnotherapist, the person I'm talking to finds an excuse to go and talk to the mortgage advisor. I do that. Yeah, it's not the most exciting uh, job to declare that I have. Yeah. If I say I'm a hypnotist, they're like, oh, a hypnotist. I get one or two responses. Either they go, oh, really? What sort of hypnotist then? Like turning people into chickens? Or I get the, oh, don't look at me. Don't look at me. What yeah. are you doing? You know, that sort of thing, <laughs> which at least sparks a bit more of a conversation. Yeah. yeah? So, and, but I, I think as well, the hypnotherapy that we're taught, so the the eyes closed trance based thing. So I'm, I'm guessing you guys would have had a fair amount of eyes closed, go into your own imagination, relax, been a yeah. share of that, so yeah. deeper and deeper, all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not what I do. Okay. So I I kind of wanted to distinguish myself from the trance based approach. Okay. So tell me what the difference is then from the trance based approach to what you do, Tim. Okay. Well mine's not a trance based <laughs> mine's yeah. without trance so mine's your eyes open you're chatting with me you, okay, you don't yeah. drift to, off to sleep i have a problem with the model of hypnotherapy that says we're going to put you into a sleep like trance state yeah mm. i know i know it's not sleep and, and we could talk about that again for a yeah. while couldn't we and for those of you that are watching that uh i don't have hypnotherapy background it isn't sleep like when you're asleep in your bed it can be to be fair if you go unconscious in the process but it's really meant to be a backing off of the conscious awareness more than a more than a a drifting off completely but anyway the problem i have with that is that anyone that works therapeutically will know the whole purpose of our therapy is to empower the client to Mm. get them to realize this wasn't me doing anything to you this was you working out the puzzle solving it for yourself and moving forwards okay um but then of course at some point in a hypnotherapy session we say right lay on the couch close your eyes drift off drift off to sleep when you wake up it'll all be fixed yeah and that's not tremendously congruent with the empowerment (laughs) idea So as much as the hypnotherapist says, but it was you that made those changes, well done, the client's going, I I don't remember doing anything. I wasn't really there, was I? Uh, And also that you get one of two responses when you do a hypnotherapy session with somebody. They open their eyes and they either say, oh, I don't think I was hypnotised because I could hear everything you were saying. Mm. Or they say, oh, I don't think I was hypnotised because I don't remember anything. I think I just fell asleep. Yeah. And you, you kind of have to convince people that they've experienced something hypnotic according to their pre-framed idea of what hypnosis is going to feel like yeah Yeah. so it just just brings a lot of problems so i decided to get rid of that side of it and work on the fundamentals and in answer to your question freaking long way of going round about it wouldn't it yeah (laughs) hypnosis for me is inducing a state of subconscious dominance okay okay and what do you mean by that subconscious i thought you might ask me that (laughs) thank you very Um, much so (laughs) So what we want to do, if you imagine we've got our conscious here, the bit we're aware of, yeah, yes. and our subconscious beneath us doing loads of amazing things, hundreds and hundreds of things all in the background, yeah, yeah. running the show, if you like, yeah, we did that analogy of captain and the crew of the ship, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing, so watch the other podcast for that bit. Um, and what we're trying to do with hypnosis is create subconscious dominance, which is what we look to do in the process of working with clients, yeah, so the subconscious comes to the fore, and what's going on isn't necessarily consciously directed by you, it's, it's happening almost perceived to be automatic, if you know what I mean, yeah? yeah. Now, what the hypnotherapist does that uses relaxation and trance, they do this. They're backing off your conscious. Relax, drift away, don't worry about it, don't focus on the voice, just drift, you know, that sort of thing, 
uh, or rather focus on my voice, whichever way you want to do it, um, and hoping that at some point we achieve subconscious dominance and now I'm dealing with your subconscious, the bit of you that's in control of your emotions, your beliefs, all of your responses, yeah, which is the bit we want to get the changes for. Um, by the way, that's why hypnotherapy is amazing because it deals directly with your subconscious, which is the bit of you that is running the show, okay? okay. Um, what I do, if I can keep you perfectly awake but still achieve subconscious dominance, I'm happy. You can be as aware of what's going on as you like. And in that process as well, if I drift off down the wrong path, you can literally just say, no, I don't agree with that. That's wrong. You've gone down the wrong path there, Tim. You can correct me. There's no ambiguity to it. I'm not dealing with a sleeping person hoping the message is going in in the right way. Another tricky question. How do you achieve subconscious dominance with a a fully conscious waking human being? You become subconsciously dominant by doing something that your subconscious mind does on its own without any recourse to a logical or rational process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The two things your subconscious does on its own without any conscious involvement, it emotes and it imagines. So anytime you get emotional, if you cry... If you get angry, um, if you get scared, the fight or flight mechanism, when something yep. jumps out at us, our decision to punch it or leap out of the way of it is made almost before we consciously perceive any threat. Yeah. Our subconscious says, you're too slow, I'll deal with this, keep us safe. Yeah. Instant response, instant subconscious dominance, right? Not the best way of doing something therapeutic, though, scare the crap out of somebody. <laughs> so instead, we get the client to use their imagination. Okay, your imagination is a function purely of your subconscious. Everything that brings it comes into your conscious awareness has started at the background with your subconscious. Nice. Yeah, crew have delivered a message to the captain. The captain has either accepted it, become aware of it, or hasn't. Yeah. So, um, so if we if we use your imagination, we induce subconscious dominance, and we deal with the part of you that's in charge of that bit of your thinking. Okay, so that's a fascinating different way of uh, a different approach ultimately to work in and getting that subconscious dominance that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So if we're talking about somebody that's experiencing, I think in the previous podcast, you talked about the five-year-old Jew that was afraid uh, that he'd, he'd lost his parent at the time. And yeah, we found yeah. out all along that that little old lady came up to you, that funny little voice that you <laughs> did. Thanks for, thanks for re- <laughs> reigniting the trauma there. Thanks, yeah. So how would we help somebody in a sense that the body's naturally going into a sense of anxiety? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's right to do so. Yeah. And you're trying to use the imagination now to... I'm, I'm working with clients when they're not in the panic state. Okay, because yeah. when you get into the panic state, it's, hard, it's a little it? harder to yeah. get the because that bit at the moment is screaming at you yeah. rather than listening to you. Yeah. Yeah. So what we look to do is work with the part of you that would create the panic, get it to understand why there's no need for panic so that it never has to do that again. If you're if you're dealing with someone in a panic state, you're fighting what process they're in at the moment. Yeah. You're, you're kind of trying to it's, it's like saying to someone, calm down. When they're panicking, like yeah. you ain't, you don't understand what's going on here. Yeah. I'm dying. Yeah. I've got, yeah. And and it's about. I mean, there are ways of calming people down. I know other people deal with with those sorts of things in terms of yeah, go into the feeling, try and make it worse, or try and control your breathing and things like that. But of course, that's literally using strategies to try and calm the crew member that's kicking yeah. off. I will very often have clients come to see me, and I'll say, "What we're here to do," and they'll say, "Oh, I want to manage my panic attacks better." And I'll be like, "Wouldn't you rather just not have panic attacks?" Yeah. And they'll go like, oh, yeah, that would be amazing. You know, is not really regarding it as a possibility. They're used to managing that crew member rather than having a calm conversation with it so it doesn't have to have that same response. And do you find people uh, can use their imagination very well? Everyone's got a good imagination. Yeah. I mean, okay, so my story, when I first started to study hypnotherapy, I was like, no, my imagination is shit. I'm terrible at it, you know. And I used to think I had a bad imagination. But now I know a little bit more about this. I realise that we all actually have a really good imagination because we're all using it constantly. When we're going somewhere, we're thinking, what's it going to be like there? What am I going to be doing? Who else is going to be there? What are they going to be doing? We navigate our way around the world by predicting what might be around the next corner, okay? It's why we can feel anxious, or excited or afraid because our mind is projecting into the future about what sort of experience might be awaiting us there. So we're kind of using it all the time then, aren't we? We are, exactly. So even though, so my thing is, I'm not visual, okay? So I close my eyes and imagine something, I see the backs of my eyelids. That's it. My, my, My mind says, of course you can't see anything, Tim, your eyes are closed, yeah? But I have quite a literal way of thinking about that. Whereas I know that if about nine out of 10 people that I work with, get them to close their eyes, they'll see the thing they're imagining, yeah? Mm. But if you can't see it, it doesn't stop you being able to utilise your imagination. You're just not visualising, 
but you'll do other things, you know. So like you might imagine a song playing and kind of hear it in your mind, like it's like it's almost playing in the next room or something. That's probably the thing I can do best is I can occasionally, if I'm really imagining nice and clearly, I can kind of hear the song playing. Yeah, it's fascinating to hear that obviously making us conscious and we've been conscious of this is how much we do spend in the imaginary world of the imagination. Yeah, yeah. But realizing how, in a sense, that imagination can either hold you back. Or if it's worked with correctly, it can transform you and move you forwards. You can Absolutely. use it from something that's been really, de- in some people's cases, destroying their whole lives without yeah, them yeah. even being consciously aware that, that the imagination that they have is doing that. That's that's really that's a really good point, you know, because a lot of people, they'll think the world is closed off to them because of their situation. And what's happened is their own limitations, their own beliefs have stopped them perceiving any options so it's almost it's it, anxiety does that by the way it cuts off avenues to you it blocks paths yeah. and then you don't even see them anymore because they're out of bounds you yeah. know as soon as you release the, you know you get rid of fear you get rid of anxiety uh, as soon as you start to see a light we're quite good at moving towards the light you know when i'm when i'm working with people for depression it's like i'm not trying to sort your life out i'm not trying to you say, oh, you change that job or you get a new, you know, you dump that relationship that you're in. I'm saying, right, at the moment you have no hope. You don't see a possibility of happiness in your future. If we can get you to understand your path to happiness is always in your own hands. Yeah. Yeah, even in the situation where we feel like constrained by life's limitations, as an adult, you know, with autonomy over my movements, you know, even if I've got a job that I feel chained to, I can still decide not to go in tomorrow yeah. that's in my hands so all of my responses ultimately there's consequences yeah and that's the thing that we fear is the consequences but if we get control of what's going on with us emotionally then we can steer ourselves forward it's fascinating when you talk back to the idea of you this seven-year-old kid states daydreaming outside of the school window and the teacher mm. says stop daydreaming mm, and yeah, it's like yeah. realizing that that's the gateway or the doorway if it's accessed and used correctly it yes. gives you the potential to actualize yeah. yourself and lead the best love for yourself yeah, where yeah, you're going. Exactly. It could well, even um, do away with, uh, you know, the medication side of it. If you think about it, you could say there's two choices. Use your imagination to see a different perspective. Yeah. Let's see if that works, which means there's no side effects then like you would get with meds. A, 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 you know, a really acknowledged therapeutic tool mm. as to help people alleviate from a certain amount which of suffering. Which is already in. inside you. This is the thing, and I think hypnotherapy is just this tool to get you where you need to go and, and loads of therapies out there aren't there there's there's literally hundreds of different therapies people could engage with and they're all valid because they're all getting good results with the right people and the, and the right practitioners yeah. the thing i like about hypnotherapy is it has it's generally i believe anyway certainly the circles i move in generally accepted to be the real short number of sessions biggest effect because yeah. we're dealing with the bit of you that is doing the thing yeah, and a lot of therapies deal with you managing that bit of you mm. rather than dealing directly with it, if that makes sense. It does yeah. make sense, yeah. And I think that's why I, I see hypnotherapy as so direct and so so making radical changes. I remember when I was at the, the premiere of my TEDx talk in Folkestone, there was a QA and a afterwards, and I was speaking about working with clients. And I got sort of, I was going to use the word ambushed. I wasn't ambushed. They didn't jump on me and beat me up. But a a few psychotherapists, there were three psychotherapists came up to me and started talking to me about how I worked. And they were really, really lovely and polite because I kind of, I don't think I I slammed psychotherapy in my talk, but I was very much like, this is a different way of approaching it. And they said, how how many sessions are you doing for trauma then? Uh, And I said, well, the same, I do three sessions for everything. And they say, how can you be getting results in three sessions? And I didn't have a great answer for them on that day. And I kind of said, well, it's just the way we work, you know, and it's just how I've always worked. But I thought about that afterwards. And I think the reason why we can get great results in a short number of sessions is because we haven't accepted the belief that it's going to take longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Absolutely. So I will set a target with a client, not just I don't want to be anxious anymore. I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to be afraid of this. I'm like, what do you want instead? How do you want to tell me the situation? How are you going to react instead? Because if we can ask your subconscious, you know, the crew member, that's what we want from you. It will either say, OK, I'll do that or I can't. And here's the reason why I can't. And then that reason. Right. That's what we're talking about, isn't it? That's what we're addressing. Because change, I don't think any therapist in the land will argue with the idea that change learning happens in a moment. We learn very quickly. Yeah. 
We don't know when that moment's going to be when it comes to working therapeutically and getting change, but we're trying to bring it forward to the earliest possible moment yeah. when maybe with counselling and psychotherapy, we're not necessarily working on that framework. We're exploring the issues. We're, we're kind of talking around it. We're waiting for the person to receive their revelation about it. Whereas if we target, if we laser guide it, then we'll very quickly realise what if we can get it, great. Let's ask for that change. If we can't, we'll very quickly realise what we're running into that stops us getting there. And then we can deal with that. Do you, know? you believe that, um, you know, some people believe in certain things and it works for them mm. and not, it might not technically be the thing that's working for them. It might be the fact that they just believe that this is working for them. Like, yeah. Uh, you have Reiki and yeah. you have uh, going to the doctor. He's given me this doc, uh, this tablet and it works now. Mm. Yeah. Do you have a problem with your clients where they don't believe in hypnotherapy? So you hit, hit a brick wall there. Have you well, had that? Well, here's the thing. I stopped talking... I stopped talking about hypnosis and hypnotherapy in my sessions years ago. So even though technically speaking, you know, if I want to talk to my insurance company, I'm doing hypnotherapy. Yeah. But because what I do isn't framed as your average person in the street recognizes hypnotherapy, you know, there's no eyes closed, relax, drift off. There is just talking directly to your subconscious. And I think we, I don't necessarily hit those barriers because it's a very different method. I'll have people come to me and say, I've been to see a hypnotherapist before. I don't think I'll be hypnotized. It didn't work for me. I'm like, that's okay. Because I guarantee what you did, we're doing something different here. Yeah. yeah. And, and also I do think it's less about the method. It's more about the practitioner and the client. Is there a connection there that's going to facilitate change? Yeah. Yeah. Are they, are they follow? Are they accepting what you're saying? Are you hearing them? Are you understanding them to the degree where what you feed back to them is open to be accepted? So almost not? in a way, you get them to believe in you, not necessarily the, the tool I you're think using. That's a really good way of simplifying that long explanation I just gave you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you again, it's been another enlightening podcast in terms of knowing the difference between what a hypnotherapist does and a hypnotist. And also, for me, hearing Tim talk about what you do with working with the imagination mm. and making me conscious of, again of how much of an important thing it is that I've got going on inside of this head of mine yeah. that can push me forwards or hold me back in life. Absolutely. I think uh, for the sufferers as well that we do this podcast for, it's like if you think about certain scenarios that you get into yeah. and you take some uh, without knowing the truth of the reality or somebody said didn't say good morning to me and you believe that they don't like you, Oh, they've fallen out with me. It's because I was late for work. And the truth is, they could just be not have even seen you. That's imagination working right there, isn't it? it is, and you can use it to have a perspective of, I'll go and check if they're okay. Yeah. You know, a, a, a different yeah. alternative Absolutely. to the reality yeah. that exists. Well, this is it. We don't, we don't see, you know, we don't experience the world. We experience it through our filters. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, a, that's an important thing to remember. People will often say, well, of course I'm depressed because of x or y that happened yeah. to me of course i'm anxious and what they've really done is accepted that that thing then leaves them a victim of what happened yeah. rather than saying right let me i can't control what happens to me i can't control what challenges life's going to throw at me i can't decide what other people think of me what they say about me what other people are doing yeah but i can always control how i respond to that yeah. problem being we put so much energy into trying to control the uncontrollables that we lose control of ourself yeah. And that's why it's always going to be the solution to start to think, right, what can I do to change that's going to help me feel better about this situation? So that's a lovely way to bring us to an end. And anybody that's watching that would love to get involved with working with Tim, we're going to put all of Tim's information at the bottom of the description section of the YouTube channel. And once again, Tim, thank you ever so much for coming Absolute here. Absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you.